Hello and welcome to Port Goulburn and once again I'm out looking for another ship and just coming into view underneath this bridge in the uh, background back there is Atlantic Huron which is a COE Max vessel which is on its way through Port Goulburn right now. I originally had the GoPro uh, over here because this that cruise ship's going to move but I just heard them on the radio they're going to be tying up <laughs> uh, while another ship comes through so I've had to quickly move the GoPro and I've placed it back over there now uh, so anyway very shortly this bridge will go up and we'll see the uh, Atlantic Huron come through here uh, so any second now the alarm should go off and uh, it'll be all systems go and time for some action All right, there she goes. She's going all the way up to 120, 120 feet, 35.5 meters uh, to its full extent. And just like you know, this ship, this uh, bridge, the Clarence, Street, the Clarence Street Bridge here in Port Coburn uh, was built, was, was actually constructed back in 1927, between 1927 and 1929. And is uh, one of four bridges like this on the whole canal. Ojak, park cargo, uh, approaching the end of the wall, lock one. Lock one will be taking them up. We'll do the turn back from them. Just take a call through the pier. Be gone by the light for it. A Seaway Max uh, class vessel which basically in layman's terms means it's designed specifically to fit through all the locks to come all the way through the St. Lawrence Seaway from the top end all the way down to this end. As the ship comes into view right now, you're going to see a big dent on the bow right there. Well, what happened, and I'll tell you for those who don't already know, because I only just found out recently because I had to find out what it was. Uh, back on July the 31st, 2022, the, the Atlantic Huron uh, collided with the NCC Kamar, uh, an oil, tank, oil chemical tanker in Quebec. Uh, and the impact resulted in damage to the Atlantic Huron's bow, as you can see. Uh, thankfully, there were no injuries reported. The collision between Atlantic Huron and the NCC Kamal was attributed to a navigational error. While the exact details may vary, such incidents often result from factors such as misjudgment of distances, miscommunication or adverse weather conditions. So there you have it. And it still sports it, as you can see right now, uh, to this very day. I guess it's too expensive for them to repair it uh, for the amount of time the ship probably has left in its life. Who knows? Uh, I'm sure people in the comments will be able to uh, answer that for me. Is it due to be scrapped at point in the near future? Is it too expensive to uh, fix it? Because uh, really, it's just cosmetic, if anything. Everybody knows what they're doing, okay? That's what he just shouted. And stop giving me SHIT. This ship really has uh, seen its fair share of a few uh, knocks and uh, things like that. Here's another one, uh, all down the side on the uh, port side. Uh, this one happened back in uh, July the 5th, 2020, uh, when Atlantic Huron collided with the south side of the Sioux Locks, uh, the West Center Pier. Uh, what happened was, uh, while approaching the Sioux Locks, the, the ship encountered a propulsion issue related to its controllable pitch propeller system. Uh, the collision uh, traced back to a single set screw that had been incorrectly installed without the required thread locking fluid uh, during a shipyard uh, visit or period, as they've written on here. Um, the ship uh, struck the west center pier, causing damage to both vessel and pier, uh, over $1.63 million US worth of damage, and the pier repairs uh, totaled 573000 So someone's going to be winched down from this when they go on to Wharf 16, which is probably where I had the GoPro earlier on. Just as well, I moved it. Security 
Uh, no. <laughs> I haven't started yet. Too busy filming you lot. What are you fishing for, bass? Uh, walleye, bass. A guy up there just caught a huge thing. I don't know what it was, but it was huge. Now, just as Atlantic Huron is trying to moor up, they're just winch throwing over there to tie it up. And there goes the Pearl Mess, now going under the uh, bridge. And she's both slightly heading towards Toronto, I'd imagine. thrusters pushing it closer to the wall and slowly just inching forward I believe they're in some kind of repair done I think I heard on the radio it's just a short stop anyway apparently Right next to me here, Atlantic Huron, uh, point up to War 16. It's exactly where I had my GoPro. <laughs> I had to go and move it. So I'm glad I heard it on the radio. Why, that would have been a few hundred dollars down the drain for sure. So anyway, uh, quite the mighty vessel right beside me here. I don't want to get too much in this way. I'm about uh, right, 60 feet away uh, to its starboard here. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite well away. It's nothing to worry about. She has it, she's nice and snug now against the wall. Send the lines down, and that's her tied up, and uh, they'll uh, do what they gotta do before they uh, set on, set, uh, sail on. So I'm gonna need to look into this, what happened here. I'm sure most of you already know. Uh, I'm gonna look, and I'll tell you exactly what happened there when I find out.
All right, that is it for another video. That was the Atlantic Huron, the Seaway Max vessel, uh, now in Port Coburn. I don't think it was expected to stop here, but it did. It's just gonna do a little bit of work on it, then it'll be on its way again. Uh, I'm heading back to Crystal Beach very shortly. There is a ship coming in. I don't know if I have time to go and catch this. Uh, I do have a lot on and I need to get back. Um, yeah, I wish I could stay out here all day. Um, but hopefully the web will be nice in another couple of days and I'll get back out again. So until next time, stay safe, see you soon.